First of all, welcome to our Women for Kansas Zoom meeting tonight. Uh, of course, my name is Betty Taylor, and I'm co-chair, and Tommy? I'm Tommy Faust, also co-chair. David, who are you? Hi, I'm the regional political director for Barbara Bollier's campaign. I'm uh, uh, popping on as uh, for this call. Uh, I thought 6.30 was the time. I apologize. You're, I You're good. Yes. You're good. Just didn't know you. So I wanted to know who you were. <laughs> didn't I want a Zoom bomber. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. And then Aaron is favorite. on. Yes. OK. OK. And when is Barbara coming on? She should Zach Elder. have already. She should have already been on. She should. Um, I don't see her. Unless she's iPad. <laughs> um, okay, I think Barbara Bo Barbara might be joining us right now. Okay. Sorry for the arms. There she is. All right. Well, okay. again, welcome. Hello. welcome. Women for Kansas. And uh, we also extended an invitation to some contacts of the Mod Squad. Uh, some of you probably know about the Mod Squad. It's a nonpartisan group also. Um, and it stands for Moderation of Our Democracy. So um, we will. Uh, enjoy having them participate too later in some questions possibly. So Tommy, do you have anything special you want to say before I introduce Barbara? No. No. No? no. Okay. Well, um, I'm hoping everyone recovered from the primary election and ready to move on to the general. And we have a lot of candidates that need help. And we're going to be hearing from one tonight and some more next month, I believe. So we're very excited to have Barbara Boyer tonight as our speaker. And many of you probably know Barbara's been a legislator here in Kansas for more than 10 years. She's known for having an independent voice working to find solutions to issues that really matter to us. She's a doctor and not a politician. She's trained to listen to the tough problems and find solutions. We need more of that in Washington. I'm sure you agree. Barbara's running to represent us in the US Senate because she knows that Kansans need a voice of reason in Washington. So if you'll unmute yourselves and give her a round of applause to welcome her, I'd appreciate it. But then remute yourself, OK? Can we do that? Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Hard to clap with one hand. But Barbara, are you with us? right here it's great to be here thanks so much betty well thank you for joining us and now i'm going to turn it over to you and mute myself okay and please everybody else mute as well it does help i've been on enough of these that <laughs> it's always interesting what you might hear in the background right so good evening all of you and welcome to my home this is my study and you can see my lovely wheat field picture in the back that my great aunt Peggy gave us as a wedding present. And uh, I do know what wheat is uh, versus soybeans uh, or Milo, just so you know, some people were questioning that. Uh, it's great for you also. I know because of COVID, I can't be there in person. And I just thank you not only for joining me in my home, for, but for letting me come into your home. It is a lovely opportunity to be together. And yes, uh, real life would be excellent, but we'll just have to settle for second best and uh, move on because we've got an election in front of us. I, I want you all to know as uh, Kansans from Reno County, I, I really appreciate all that you're doing on the ground that helps keep Kansas strong. And while I know I'm, you know, one of the candidates at the top of the ballot this cycle, uh, I want to be very clear and make no mistake about it that I understand campaigns are built and won from the ground up. And that's how we work in the state. And I know I truly could not do this without you. 
And so true, just greatly appreciate you taking the time to be here with me tonight and for all the work you always do. You know, I know that you all will help make sure that not only will we send me as the first Kansas Democratic woman to the United States, history, uh, United States Senate in our whole history, I would also be the first woman physician to ever serve in that body. And we are going to do this in spite of all the challenges that COVID has thrown at us. And we are strong, resilient people and can make that happen. And I also want you to know that down ballot races are very important to me and to all of us. Uh, and I have really spent this last week uh, a little bit grieving um, and very alarmed. So those are good questions and important ones. So first, Karen. Ed Ziana, would it be possible for you to mute? Many other attorneys general across the country. We have 31 decisions in those cases. And we want As to I don't know who that is. Maybe I... somebody knows. Betty, do you know how to mute everybody? And then I can, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> it's pretty loud here in my room. Uh, anyway, I, I, I was very, very upset and alarmed to see the number of moderate, uh, of my colleagues that got, um, they lost their seats in the primary. and we know that that was the far right doing this. Our old friends, the Kansas Chamber and Americans for Prosperity. And, you know, I was really disappointed to see that Ed Berger, he was such a good colleague of mine and he will be deeply, deeply missed in that legislature. I actually served with Ed, not only in the, in, in the general Senate, but he and I were on the Senate Public Health and Welfare Committee together. He was the vice chair, I am the ranking Democrat. And he was also, uh, as a result of that, we were both on the uh, Medicaid expansion task force and we served on the uh, Can Care Oversight Committee. And he is a true public servant and I am very sad at uh, his loss. Uh, all the more reason we've got to work to get out the vote. <laughs> as we come upon this November election. And I bring this up about Ed because as many of you know, I was a former moderate Republican. I've switched parties to become a Democrat and I've had that experience of this very far right coming after me. And um, I'm really worried about our state if that continues to prevail. And you and I both know that's, why you are here, why you formed, um, because you know what it means to do the good work across the aisle. And those, that group is not about working across the aisle. They only want their own agenda. And they don't want to tackle the very big problems that we have in this state, and even at the federal level, in a bipartisan way. And, and I find that very disappointing. And we do not want to derail the common sense progress that we've made in these last two years by um, you know, rebuilding from the very destructive Brownback tax experiment. And as you and I both know, that devastated our state and we are still reeling from the results. You know, here we are, uh, they controlled the party for eight years and really, <laughs> Top to bottom, they did that. And, and we're still cleaning up the mess and have a number of years to go. And I, I truly believe that we have Kansans, we have just been through too much and we've come too far to turn back now. We've got to push ahead and get reasonable people elected, people who are interested in being voices of reason and working together cooperatively for our government. So for me, it means that you all are really critical to this race. We need to not only build on what we had by electing Laura Kelly as our governor, we have to do all we can to protect a governing coalition for her, or it will be incredibly difficult for her to move anything forward. Uh, as we've already seen, these last years in our state Senate. And the same thing is what I have seen happening in the US Senate, that 
the House votes and passes many, many bills, and they've just sat on the Senate floor uh, without any opportunity to move forward. Uh, I am running to be a person who stands up and helps model the behavior of let's work together and let's get things moving forward. We must listen to one another, not just to respond, but to understand, and then look at the evidence and the data and collaborate and then make plans that will actually pass through Congress and get us in better positions as a United States. And really, you know, we don't have a single day or a single vote to lose at this point. We have got to remain steadfast and strong. And really, to be clear to you all, this race and this election for me, it's, it's not about securing political power for a party. It is about the future of Kansans. It's about the future of our entire nation. And we've got to be willing to stand together. I know uh, early voting is less than two months away. Oh my gosh, how time flies, even in COVID. <laughs> and it's going to be a challenge as we already have experienced. It's a challenge to get out to vote in the middle of a pandemic. And yet here we are uh, with stunned eyes watching uh, really this United States Postal Service being threatened by our government. And that potential, we, we have a potential to even make it harder for us to vote by mail. So we need to be vigilant. And I know you all have experienced, you know, anyone who lives west of Highway 81, as some of you, I don't know who on this call does or doesn't, but, you know, those devastating attacks on the, on the post office and the postal service really hurt rural communities. And we cannot let that happen. And, and to assure you, I have my legal team as a campaign. We are looking into this and seeing what can be done. I know that uh, my, I, I, I think I heard, I've been working all day, but it sounds to me uh, that I heard that the House of Representatives uh, Congress is going to be called back to meet and, and, and vote on something for this issue to protect our postal service. And I will say that at, on a personal level, I have heard from now two people, some very specific examples in the state of where they have been removing uh, sorting machines and have reduced the numbers of people and got a second call from a veteran who had to wait more than five days for his medication to be mailed, uh, to go through the mail and ended up not able, you know, he was desperate for his medication. Those are real, true Kansans, and this is impacting them. And we, again, we will remain vigilant. We have to be sure we can vote. So, you know, as I visit with you tonight, I look forward to your questions, but I want you to know, Let's make the next 78 day, days really count. My campaign, as well as many others, we need all the help that we can get. And we need you to volunteer in any way that you know how. Uh, all of us, I am certain, including me, you know, ours is bullyayforkansas.com. Just go to our website. You can click on the volunteer button and someone will connect with you and find out what things you might do. It could be anything from writing postcards to helping people get yard signs to uh, tweeting, if you're a tweeter, uh, reposting on social media or, just, uh, media or just literally talking over the fence to your neighbor and being sure we, we talk about these issues. Uh, of course, contributions are so helpful to candidates it costs significant amounts of money these days to run a campaign. And uh, particularly during COVID, our only methods to truly get our word out are either now by mail, uh, by the internet, or for me, for big races like mine, uh, through advertising on television and radio. So uh, that takes help for people like you. And of course, if you see any kind of misinformation, uh, don't hesitate to report it. Uh, you know, if it's about me, holler at our campaign. Let us know uh, because this this is an age where uh, rumors 
run rampant and falsehoods run deep. Uh, they're already out there, I know, and you'll hear more and more about me that you'll say, I just don't believe that, and don't, <laughs> because it's not true, <laughs> okay? They do that. Uh, and then, uh, like you're doing tonight, any virtual event you can participate in for me or any of the other candidates, it's really happen helpful to them, just so they can get information and be in touch with real people, uh, because we're all, because of COVID, very limited in what we can do. So uh, I'm gonna stop. I, I really am anxious to hear your questions tonight. I want you to know as well how much I appreciate all the work you've done in the past for the state. Uh, as, as one who's been in the state house for 11 years, I saw the difference before there was a woman, women for Kansas and moderate groups. Uh, and, and it makes a huge difference in the progress we can make as a state and ultimately as a nation. So look forward to your questions. Thanks so much for having me tonight. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, hi all, I'm Zach. I'm uh, an, an advisor to Barbara on her campaign and I'll be moderating today. We have a, a good intimate group here so we don't have to jump through a bunch of hoops to take questions. We'll just um, you know, have you all raise your hand if you're on video or if you're not on video, you're welcome to throw a question into the chat and um, I will uh, call on you and give you a reminder of what the question is about and you can unmute at that point and uh, ask Barbara your question. Um, so uh, who wants to be the, the brave first asker? You don't have to be brave because I'm not mean. <laughs> Somebody's got to have a question. This would be a first. If there <laughs> were no well, I'll ask it. How can you combat some of the misinformation that's put in mailboxes? Because I have a feeling from what I've heard, that's what got Ed Berger. You know, what, what a tragic circumstance. I have spoken with Ed more than once since the race and um, you know, it hurts. And, and I shared with him, having been uh, run for office, this is now my fifth time to run. Uh, and they've come out, you know, I, I'm, I'm quick to say, uh, when I was a Republican, no, nobody helped me, no party stood behind me, they just attacked me. And when I was a Democrat, at least now I do have a party that stands with me, but they still just attack me and they're mean. And uh, they may not, specifically lie, but they misrepresent the truth, which I taught my children, my value system says that's lying, uh, misrepresenting the truth. And so what do we do? We do our best to preempt that. If you've noticed uh, and had the opportunity to see any of our advertising thus far, either heard it on the radio, seen it on social media, or seen the ads on TV, um, I, I am being honest and open and truthful with just, I'm a person who's there to be a voice of moderation and to listen. I deeply care about others. I'm a physician who is, uh, went into medicine to improve people's lives. And it's for that exact same reason that I went into public service. And they will say <laughs> terrible things. And again, we will do the best we can to diminish and deflect that information by presenting the truth. So uh, I am not a person that becomes negative, but I guarantee you I'm a tough broad and I will uh, call out when things aren't right because, uh, or, or when they're saying mistruths, you have to do so. And it is difficult. I mean, they already put something out today that has, says terrible things like, things about abortion that are not true, that, that, things about uh, child care or ch child care services that, you know, um, aren't the case. It, understanding why a person voted for or, or against a bill, it's why we have explanations of vote and they need to be attached to the vote, which they are in the state house, but they get, those votes get misused on postcards and the like. So 
my expectation is we'll get that information out and do the best we can. You and I both know some people just want to believe. And, you know, I'm not going to get their vote anyway. It's the people that really don't know that we need to help know the truth and stand up for what the truth is. So thanks for that very good question. Oh, isn't it hard? <laughs> I, I'm afraid you're a very brave soul to do what you're doing. And we want to help as much as we can. Are you going I, to have I, any... I are you going to have any literature drops in this area? I believe the county has some, the Democrats have some signs ordered. Um, don't know when they're gonna get here, but how can we help? I do not know about the lit drops because of COVID. Uh, so we'll have to refer that back to my campaign manager. I'll find out. Uh, the, the very last thing I want to do is put anybody at risk uh, uh, that, that's just not the goal. And, uh, you know, when you're very spread out, uh, that's what the U S postal service is supposed to do. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and we do our best to raise enough so that we can actually get those things out and delivered. So we shall see. Uh, but again, my first, uh, commitment is to the people is to follow public health recommendations. Uh, and yes, you can be out by yourself safely, but even Dr. Burks, if you are familiar with her on, in Trump's campaign, she was in Kansas on Saturday. And if you happen to read, she recommended to all of us as Kansans that we wear a mask at all times, inside or outside now, no matter. So that's something that's new to me. I hadn't, uh, you know, I practice social distancing and, and wearing a mask if I'm afraid I, you know, for any reason think I won't be able to socially distance at, you know, six feet plus. So we'll see, we may be wearing them all the time. Uh, imp important to take care of each other, not just ourselves. Thank you, Barbara. Any other questions? Ra just raise your hand and I'll call on you iPad, I believe, is Candace. Okay, that's great. Okay, so Candace has her hand up. Oh, she does. Oh, I good. I couldn't see it. Yeah. Oh, good. Red. I don't know what that means, but her hands up. Did I get on mute? Can you You're hear good. me? Yes. Okay. Um, my question is. Um, our, our local democratic group and even our women for Kansas group is pretty white. What kinds of plans are, what kinds of things are you doing to try to get that other vote, the minority vote, what black and Hispanic vote? Because they're gonna be very important in this election, I think. So have, do you have some specific plans, some specific things you want to achieve that you're going to target specifically to those groups or any way we can help to get to those groups? Candace, what, what a great question. And uh, I will tell you, those things have already been put in progress. We've had various meetings around the state with all kinds of different groups. We actually are working on having someone to help us to put into Spanish some of our materials, uh, et cetera, and to reach out with us to them. Uh, and, and, and we all know if you go into Great Bend or uh, other places with meatpacking, it's not just Hispanic or, uh, you know, we have, uh, I know from being on the education committee, there are schools that have 80 languages, different languages spoken by our students. So our goal as a campaign is to reach out to all. And they, we have, in addition, this state, we have helped put together a coordinated campaign that not only uh, works with me, but works with all of the congressional candidates. So, um, you know, we have four other women on the Democratic side running for those seats. And all of us together through that coordinated campaign are trying to build and reach all those, every population, white, Black, Hispanic, Vietnamese, and on down the list uh, to make sure people get out the vote. So what can you do? You can be sure that given any opportunity, 
you also, if you have any connections into communities that are of minority link, reach out to anyone you know and see if there's something they need help with for voting, if they need help getting people registered, uh, if they just need any kind of help, whatever it may be, that's what our campaign's goal is, for their voice to be represented. Uh, and, and that's very, very important to us. And uh, I, I, I look forward to the opportunity to reach into more of those groups. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just keep pressing forward. If you have access and names, we're ready to take them. I'll make any phone call there is that needs to be made. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that too. And we all know, I'm gonna just add on an aside, you know, black lives do matter. And uh, we, to be clear, this state is not, or any city, we're not going to defund our police and that will be misused. People, you know, the opposition will say, oh, she's gonna take away all the money from the police. Of course not. We need our local uh, departments to help enforce our laws and keep us safe, but we also need help with our mental health programs and you know that's why i've been such an advocate for medicaid expansion unfortunately right now people with uh, severe mental health issues very likely end up in our criminal justice system to the point of even being incarcerated when what they need truthfully is health care mental health care so let's work on those things together rather than uh, spreading misinformation that somehow we're not going to have a police force anymore. That's, that's blatantly absurd. <laughs> it just is. Thank you, Barbara. Any other questions? Sally. Sally, you need to unmute. Yeah, don't worry, I forget too. <laughs> Okay. I'm concerned about Western Kansas because I watch the Eastern part of the state work hard and uh, support candidates. And then the Western part just comes in and at the last minute and, and people, good people are defeated. I know that's what happened to Mary Jo Taylor. I know it's what happened to Ed Berger. And so, yeah, I'm really concerned about that. How are you going to combat that, that mindset of Western Kansas? And I'll go ahead and mute myself again. Sally, before I even ran, I said um, to Democratic leadership that you must show me with data that I need to be the candidate because if any of you remember, Barry Grissom had spent the last two years prior to that preparing to run. And I was very happy being a state senator, <laughs> but people came to me and said, we want you to run. And I said, you know, this isn't what I thought I'd be doing, but I'm willing to listen and talk. And so I said, you need to show that it needs to be me, that I'm the one that needs to be running that can win, and two, that there is a path to victory. There has to be that because I don't wanna waste people's time and money. And the entire reason I was even talking was because I was so concerned about the Republican candidates that they could not represent this state well, in my opinion. I knew I could do better. And that poll came back and showed that there was a path and that it could be done and it needed to be me. So here I am. So I will not get every vote. I never, nobody does, but there is a path to win. And yes, will the majority of my votes need to come more from the Eastern side? Yes, that's where most of the population is. So will the other candidate, but the Western side, we just need to move the margins. So that's why people like you, whoever you know, and whoever you know, who knows somebody else, to reach out around the state and make certain that all those people are voting that want common sense, that want bipartisanship, that want someone who will listen rather than just follow political party down 
a merry pathway. That, that's what we need to reach out to. So of course, you'll see different ads on TV. Some will appeal very specifically to you. Some might be a little different, but the goal is to appeal to every different group in different ways and get them on our team to win. So, uh, you know, every candidate always has to work hard and earn enough votes to win. That's just what I'm gonna be doing. And I will tell you, this race is exciting to people. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of momentum. And, and to be clear, like grassroots fundraising, we've received contributions from every single county in the state. That, again, I don't know if that's ever happened for a US Senate candidate as a Democrat, but it's a big deal. And, and people are ready and, and getting behind us and involved. So we're gonna do the very best we can. I expect to win. You know, polling, it looks good. It's historic to have a Democratic U.S. Senate candidate tied with the Republican at this stage of a race. All is looking good. So we just persist. It's hard work. We can do it. Thank you, Sally. Other questions? Uh, Carol. I have two questions. Uh, and they are not alike. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, very well. Yes. Okay, good. I am puzzled by the ad of uh, Moran and Marshall right now. They're running it a lot about the wall and and uh, immigration. Um, what's behind that? Yeah. And I'll let you address that. And then yeah, I'd I'll like you that one, and then we'll add, you can ask another one. You know what, Carol? I wondered the same thing. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to give you my speculative opinion, um, guess. I wonder if they're trying to secure the uh, Kobach group and pull them into their camp. That's my first guess. Uh, the second is, as you can tell, that comes from an outside pack. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's because, you know, my opponent doesn't have, he didn't have any money. $600,000 was it. Uh, it. It costs a lot more than that to run a campaign. Uh, so the outside groups had to come in and maybe they don't understand Kansas as well as we do. I, I don't know. And I see it as their problem, not their advantage by any sense of the word. I, 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 I don't know. You, we all know, you know, having spoken to many, both manufacturers and uh, ranchers and farmers, we need our immigrants in this state. One in 10 workers in Kansas is an immigrant. So it is foolish to think that that, that population doesn't matter to the state. It is, it is vital. They are vital to our economy and our well-being. So that would be a good um, answer if someone wants to bring up that ad uh, to yes. someone. Yes. Okay. And to be clear, I want safe borders. I mean, who doesn't? But we need immigration reform. And neither, you know, over time, when Obama was in the White House, when, when Trump has been in, neither group has reformed our immigration system and we need to get it done. And that's a very high priority for me because people are hurting because of it. My second question is your stance on abortion. Um, what, how can we support you in your uh, stance? What do we my, say? Well, my stance is that I have always supported the privacy of the physician-patient relationship. And in very, that decision is a very complicated and difficult trying problem. I mean, it, it's a challenge and no, you know, I don't want, and I don't think anyone else wants a lawmaker in that private physician patient relationship. And 
I will tell you honestly, if you noticed when Roger Marshall was questioned about taking hydroxychloroquine, what were the words out of his mouth? Why are you all getting in my private physician patient relationship? He said, it's, it's, we get to make those decisions. And I'm like, exactly. Mm -hmm. Women have been saying this across the state for years and years and years. Suddenly when it's his healthcare decision-making, he doesn't want politicians involved, but when women are making their decisions and very tough situations, they don't need politicians involved as well. And I am always about safety. So again, you're gonna read that. I mean, I'm, I'm giving you too much information now, but you're gonna see things printed about me that I don't support abortion clinics being inspected. That is a falsehood. Of course they should be inspected, just like every other healthcare facility in the state, but at no greater expectation with different rules and different regulations that prevent them from providing safe healthcare to their patients. And those are things I have voted against. If it's consistent across all healthcare facilities, well, fine, but not when it's different. It, 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 healthcare is healthcare, in my opinion. And yes, isn't it hard? And oh, yeah. I have also always, always worked to make sure that women have access to contraception and have tried in the past to have bills passed to ensure that it's affordable, if not free to people. Uh, just like the, uh, what Colorado has done, if you're not familiar, look up Colorado Contraception. Fantastic. Uh, they have succeeded in reducing their abortion rate in multiple groups by over 50%. And they've reduced teenage pregnancy. I don't remember by how, I mean, it's a tremendous amount. We could do that too, if we wanted. But they choose to do nothing for anything. Thank you, Carol. Good, uh, very good question. Thank you. Other questions? Oh, uh, yeah. Shannon. Am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Good to okay. see you. You too. I, Barbara, thank you so much for running for this seat. I am so impressed with the campaign you're running and the ads on TV are wonderful. You are an inspiration to me for my campaign. And I don't know if you remember, but I met you at the Reno County Dems meeting. Yes, back I do. In January, I think. When and we can still be together. <sighs> yes. And in May, I had the same experience where I had people reach out to me and ask me to run for this Senate seat. So I am the Democratic candidate running against Mark Stephan here in Reno County in District 34. So I am modeling my campaign very much after yours. Um, I believe in what you believe in, um, upfront, honesty, genuineness. I am not I think other people will be out there to fight the tougher battles for us behind the scenes um, because I know Ed Berger had to, to endure a lot of that negative uh, campaigning against him with a lot of lies and deceit and it was a very wicked campaign and, and I'm expecting the same thing. And I think it might be a little harder for them to do it against a woman, but then again, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how this is going to work out but for me. Can I, I, will give it my I, best. I promise you, they don't care what gender you are. Yeah, they and, don't. And just build up that tough skin now. And I will tell you, uh, no matter how tough you are, it's, it still hurts. Of course it hurts, mm -hmm. but you can survive hurt. Uh, and, and, you know, I think it's a great example. 
you know, what our children go through with the internet these days and bullying and, and, and it's a tough world. Uh, I remember thinking uh, whatever they sent out about me one year and, and they will about you and they do it to everyone. Uh, I, I thought, my goodness, you know, I'm in my fifties or whatever, however old I was, I said, and as much as this hurts, I can't imagine what our 12 and 14 year olds are going through in this world with uh, the amount of bullying that is uh, become acceptable. It is not acceptable and it's okay to stand up. And we'll talk about things I've done in the past, certainly at the state level to work combat against this. So uh, just reach out to my campaign sometime and I'll get you a few pointers, little things that drive them crazy. <laughs> that would be wonderful. Just kill them with kindness. <laughs> Well, it's even, I mean, you kind of have to stand up, but I'm all, you know, it, it's all right. But do keep smiling and know that you're doing the right thing when you're running for, you know, you, you are. And they can say all those mean things, but uh, ultimately you're doing your calling and keep up with it. We're called to do these things, serve. It's what we do. And I am ready for that. And I think another thing that really helps us as women and mothers is that we can convey that with this certain kind of sincerity that um, maybe a lot of people can't. I, I don't know, just from my own experience, because my service has been um, after 16 years in careers that I loved, I became a stay at home mom and raised our two children. So I, and I did a lot of volunteer time. Right. So I've been already a public service. Well, and, public and the bottom line, service. all of us on this call, we're all about trying to make life good for others. That's yes. what we do. And, and we just do it in different ways. So thanks to all of you for all that you do, because it, whatever it is that we're doing to help the state and the people in it, uh, they, they need our help. And I'm, I'm so proud of you for standing up to do the right thing, all of you, including those of us who happen to run for office, whatever it is. But uh, each, each of us are needed in our parts. Thank and these Reno, these Reno County women for Kansas are great. It's a wonderful chapter. You oh, I know. Support. I have my, uh, I'm a member. There you go. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Shanna. Um, so we all have Thank time you. for just, just about one more question. And then um, after that, Barbara, go ahead and close us out. Perfect. Gentlemen, I see a couple of any of you have questions. All right. Well, Barbara, um, I think Bob's I, I guess I have one question. It gets back to voting again. I know. Uh, we have really kind of uh, with our voting, new voting right uh, laws that we have put in a couple of years ago, we have kind of, we have locked out many of the minorities in our state. And that really concerns me, the fact that uh, this is our most important constitutional right. And it's also, I think it's just as important as the first amendment the freedom of speech, because for many people, this is how they voice their opinions about what's happening in this country. What can we do in the future, at least in Kansas, to uh, minimize or eliminate some of these voter ID, strict voter ID laws, the uh, all the requirements necessary to get your I, uh, your IDs? What 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 is our plan? Well, I, I will tell you, <laughs> it, it involves getting more people elected that will do those things. And sadly, we just watched this, you know, horrific wave of some of those people being taken out with no Democratic candidate on the other, you know, to, to run against them. So we've got to get people out there to run for office and have that ready. I, I, I would love the chance to share with you all the reason the vote for 
uh, requiring an ID passed, and I was there, and I voted for it, not because I thought it was the best thing to do, but we were presented with, if this bill doesn't pass, then we are going to bring back a bill that gives Chris Kobach prosecutorial power. And none of us wanted that. So we went ahead and voted for the lesser of the two evils, shall we say. And now they're using that, the attorney general, et cetera, are saying, oh, well, Kansans, you know, overwhelmingly supported this law. Well, no. <laughs> we, did, we had a secretary of state that was going to cause even more potential harm, and he still ended up with that ability. But that's where that came from. So bottom line is we're going to have to change the people to get change the law. It's what it's going to take. That's the bottom line. In the meantime, we can work with people and be sure they have what they need to be registered. It takes a lot of time and a lot of work. But that's what we can do just to help them. And sometimes it may be a simple, maybe they don't have the money to do the things, to send in for the application for whatever, their birth certificate. You know, that's something that you could put together as a group, Women for Kansas. Maybe that's what some of your donations you can get for people to help, you know, have a not-for-profit that helps people get those things. I, I'm just speaking off the cuff here, but whatever it takes, everyone deserves in this country the opportunity to vote. It is a sacred right, period. And we should be doing everything we can to make sure they have that. Thank you for your concern about that issue. Stephanie has her hand up. Okay, we can take Stephanie's question and then um, Barbara, why don't you go ahead and close this out after Okay. That. Mine kind of falls along with the, um, that ID. We have clients that don't have IDs. Stephanie, you've frozen, unfortunately. Well, clients um, that don't have an address to get an ID. So they can't get a job because they don't have an ID. Exactly. And that's why we need to help. It's going to take people like us to get out and help those people. And I don't know what you have available in Reno County, but it's something you as a group might want to check into and see if there's an opportunity to help those people in some way and, 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 and move them forward. That's the best I know right now. And of course, reach out. Uh, Ed Berger isn't gone yet. Okay. <laughs> so Go ahead and reach out and, uh, you know, we all, he's there to do good and I'm sure he'd be helpful. Thank you. you. Tell him I said, by God, go out finishing the job well. <laughs> Show them what they're missing. Yeah. Betty also Thank had you. a question. You know what? I, I, unfortunately, I've got to close and... Is it Nancy, is it that you had a question? No, go ahead. No, what I was gonna say is if I, we haven't had time to get you to your question, please just go ahead and send it to the campaign and you can go on our webpage, bolierforkansas.com and there's a information uh, opportunity and you can just, it's like info at bb4ks. You can just send in a question there and, and we'll get back to you and answer it. Uh, and uh, the, you know, it's available all the time. Uh, I would prefer if you weren't like the lady that called me at 7.15 this morning and wanted a question answered. Uh, as I told her, I am standing here in my underwear. Please give me a minute. <laughs> like, but I, I try to be as available as possible. And obviously I can't answer the phone all the time. But uh, point being is we will as a campaign and reach out. And if you hear from anybody that they have questions, Whenever you ask the question about the abortion, if somebody wants to really actually have a conversation, have them connect with us because 
I am always willing to talk and listen. We may disagree, but that's okay. Uh, but we, we have to listen to one another and listen to understand one another. And again, we can disagree, but that's what we're called to do, to be in community together. And, and we need you to honor that. So it is really great to be with you all here tonight. I want you to know democracy is at stake in Kansas, in this country. Uh, I find it, I believe, I'm sure many of you do as well. I say almost every day, I can't believe this is the United States of America right now. It does not seem like it. And then we throw on top of that a pandemic, which is so hard for all of us. If you're like me, it's lonely, it's hard. This is not what I, I would like to be with people. Uh, but we can persist, we can persevere, we can get through this, we need each other, and we need to help get good people elected because out of any times in our lives that we've seen why people need to work together and we need good government. We don't need too much government, but we need good government to help us through crises. And this is a time of crises. So thank you for all that you do. You are rock stars. Uh, Reno County is lucky to have you. Go out, do the good work, holler when you need us. And thank you so much for being here tonight. And like I said, if you need questions answered, let us know. And of course, wear your masks. <laughs> Be safe. Wash your thank hands. You, Barbara. Out of crowds, thank you. All right. Thank you all. Good thank night you. and thanks for having me. I'll look forward to when we can be in person again. Good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good luck to all of you as well. We'll be in touch. Good night. Good night. Good. Rest of the